Hey, so we did a tutorial the last time around getting uh, widgets into OBS, which was cool. Uh, we had a little Twitter handler thing, which you could use for displaying text of any kind on there. And we also made a meme show, so you can reuse that widget and show many memes on the screen, uh, which was cool. But the problem was when we when we actually got around to using them, you had to do this whole fiddly thing with a. Actually, let me just move this window over here. We had to use this whole fiddly thing here, didn't we? Where we we show it there and comes on and it, it's cool, it's cool. But you've got to manually do this, and when you're in the middle of doing a stream, you don't want to come over here and go, oh, oh, I want to click on that so I can see great Scott. It's, it's going to be a pain for for everybody involved. So I wanted to touch on using Touch Portal. There are other tools you can use your your stream deck and other things. But for this example, I'm going to use Touch Portal, which is a, a free bit of software, which you can download off the internet. And I'm going to show you how you can, with some OBS plugins, quickly show those memes by pressing a button on Touch Portal. That's fairly simple. And then the second bit is going to be how you can read Twitch chat through Touch Portal. And then you can react to what's being said in Twitch chat to show the memes if people say certain keywords, which you, you may want to you may want to only allow mods or um, subscribers to do that. That's up to you. But I'll show you how to do it anyway. So to start with, you're going to want to go to touch-portal.com. Don't worry, the, the links will be in the description as always. Uh, and if you go to download, you'll see this wonderful page here. If you go to download, I'll take you here. I'm on Windows, so I click that. If you're on Mac, Android, whatever. Well, these two are the server bits. These two are for the, the client, which you're going to need. Like you. So you'll set up the server bit on your, your desktop, be it Windows, well, Windows for me, Mac OS maybe for you. Um, then once you've got that installed, you'll get something which looks like this. Hello, that's Touch Portal. Um, and then you'll have a mobile device, be it a tablet, uh, an iPhone, an iPad, uh, an Android phone, whatever device you have, which is on Android or iOS, that will be the client. So you'll effectively be able to see the buttons from Touch Portal. And I'll show him again. There it is. Hello, that's Touch Portal. So on my on my tablet in front of me, I can see the go to main button. And we're gonna add other buttons in here as we go. But you're gonna want to do a quick download on that. And then from there, we'll move on to configuring it. So assuming that you've downloaded Touch Portal now, you should have something which looks like this. I mean it won't look exactly like this. I think it has a demo screen with with uh, other buttons on, but you can clear off whatever's on there. It, it doesn't really matter. I mean, you can work with what's currently there. As long as you can click somewhere and make a new button, we're good. Oh, that's a bit big, isn't it? Let's, let's shrink that bit down. Yeah, so when you click to, to make a button, you'll see this sort of thing. And we'll get onto that in a minute. First of all, we're going to want to hook this up to OBS. So if you enter here and go to OBS, um, it says here you need to install the OBS WebSockets plugin, which is easy enough because all you need to do, go to this website. And I'll give you a link. It's on GitHub. If you remember the previous tutorial, we showed um, a gist, which was on GitHub um, from source code. And this is this is a full project, and they offer you a download link here for Mac, Windows, Linux, whatever. Um, so in this case, it would, for me, I would download the Windows installer. You guys download whatever you need to and install it. Once you're done installing it, restart OBS, and OBS will have a um, it'll have a plugin there for for connecting up which we'll, we'll cover in a minute. Let's close all this down. Then once you've got it installed, you'll then see if you go to here, tools, WebSocket server settings, and then here's where your settings are. You can set the server port to be whatever you want. You set whatever password you want on there, and you can enable system tray alerts. It's up to you, but basically when you've got system tray alerts, it will notify you when someone's connected. Um, generally, because you're only going to be allowing this on an on a internal network, it shouldn't be such, such an issue. I still put a password on there just to be safe. Um, but that's up to you. So as long as those are all set, that's cool. And then once that's done, if you look on here, it should say, we go into here and OBS. All these settings should be the same. So local host, which is, which is your local box. I mean, you put the IP address in if you want, or if you're using a network machine, put the IP address in, put the WebSocket port in and put the password that you've got in and put all to connect in. Once you then press save, um, it'll automatically connect up every time that you load up Touch Portal. Um, and you can even think, there you go. If you press that one, you can connect with OBS. And there you go. I've got a little little notification on my other monitor, which tells me that it's connected up. So that's that bit done. So for the next bit, 
um, we're going to want to hook up to Twitch. So to do that, you have to do that through Touch Portal. So if you're on the Touch Portal, go to Settings again, go to Twitch, and then there's Connect Twitch Account and Request Chat Token. You'll need to do both of these. So if you press the Connect, follow through the dialogues. Um, it's a simple web logon system where you need to log in to Twitch and uh, it will basically authenticate for you and it will give you the access token. You copy and paste that in there. And then you your chat token bit there, you basically do the same thing, do a request, you fill in the details, and then you get the token back there. Once you've got those two bits in there, save it. And that means that you can now connect up to Twitch with certain commands within here. So if I go back into here now, um, and I go down to, as you can see, there's the OBS things that are available to me now because I've hooked up to OBS. And if you go down to Twitch, where's Twitch? There we go. So I've got all these things on Twitch now. You also hook up to Twitter and other things as well. So you can send tweets if you want. But that'll be in a different tutorial. Um, so that should now have OBS hooked up and Twitter hooked up. If you've got those two bits hooked up, you're doing good. Right, so now we're going to do the first bit, which is going to be adding a button to just show a meme for a few seconds, then hide it. Then that way you don't have to go on to OBS to actually do any of this. You can just have a nice little button on your tablet or your phone. You press that button, it shows the meme for a few seconds, and off it goes. So to start with, you'll need to know what source it is, which is app recording. Sorry, the scene, which is app recording, and the source, which we'll use Great Scott here. So if we go into Touch Portal, make a new button here. And again, you can click anywhere. You can see it highlights where these, these grids are. And when you've got the pro version, you don't need the pro version. If you have the pro version, I think it's only like 15 quid or something, um, or maybe $15. I'm not too sure, but it's fairly cheap as far as bits of software go for streaming. Um, once you've got the pro version, you can use as many big sizes as you want here. I think you might be limited to 4 by 2 on the free version. But anyway, click anywhere. And also, it's worth noting, you can click on any existing button and see what it does. So we're going to make a new button here. Call it Great Scott. And we'll make it a transparent border so you can see the background. Save that. So the button doesn't do anything, but we've got a button there now. So if we go through here, we're going to want to go to OBS Actions and Source Visibility. So we want to show. For app recording scene, great Scott. Then after that, we're going to want another action, which is a logic wait for timer. So for here, we'll say seconds, and we'll go wait for eight seconds. And then we go on the other OBS one again, which is set source visibility. And then we want to hide the scene app recording, great Scott. So we'll show it, it'll wait for eight seconds, then it'll hide again. So we press save. Now, on, you can't see my tablet, but I've got my tablet here. If I press the button on my tablet, poof, it should come on. You see it for a few seconds, and that'll go away. So that's cool. We've, we've now shown the, the meme on a button, and you can, you can hook all the memes up to a button um, and show them whenever you want manually. But to push things further, we, we would like to also be able to have it when you're, when you're doing your live streams on your Twitches, if you can listen to the channel chat and go, hey, if somebody says something in there and they've got a specific role, it will automatically trigger that meme. So let's jump into doing that. And it's a lot simpler than you might think. So if you make here, trigger great Scott. And right, so there we go. We can see the button there. So let's actually make it do something. Now, we're going to use an event here rather than on press. And it's worth noting as well in version 2.2 of touch portal to have an event run you have to have it on an active page so for example if i if i just save that and go down here this is a page if i've got this shown on my tablet or phone whatever client is connected it's classed as active however if i was on another page which which didn't have this button on i wouldn't be able to trigger it in version 2.3 of touch portal you'll be able to have global events which are basically the same sort of thing as here, but they can act regardless of what page you're on. But 2.3 isn't out yet. And I might do another tutorial when 2.3 is out, because I'll be moving some of my stuff over to, over to that. But anyway, let's get on with, with triggering this. So if we go down to Twitch, and you will notice when we get there, the blue ones are for actions, the green ones are for events. So an on-chat message event. We don't want everyone, because we don't want everybody to trigger it. I mean, you might do, but it... It's a, a bit open to vulnerability then because people could keep spamming that and that could be a pain. So if we allow mods to do it, the broadcaster, administrator, um, that way you, you're more likely to trust your mods and your broadcaster and your admins to do those sort of things. On here you can have contain start with ends with is equal to. 
for this I'm going to do contains and we want it to have hashtag great Scott so if anybody has a sentence on Twitch chat which has great Scott in there it will automatically trigger this so then after that much like the other one we'll want to go to OBS source visibility show app recording great Scott then if we go to uh, wait for timer wait for eight seconds milliseconds is there's a thousand milliseconds to one second so if i was to say 800 no eight thousand eight thousand that would be the same in milliseconds but you can do it in seconds minutes whatever um and then we go want this again so if we go down to obs source visibility hide the scene app recording great scott save so now as long as that is active on your tablet or phone you can trigger it so let's let's do that now so as i'm not live streaming now it's a bit difficult for me to actually show that but i have got a, a tool here called chatty which is what i use when i'm i'm streaming so i don't have to be looking at the twitch window and this is effectively the same as twitch chat so well this is that this is literally twitch chat i've just connected it via an irc client well it's not exactly it. let's not get into that but it uses a different protocol to connect up to twitch so even if i'm not streaming i can still be on chat um so from here let's say i want to do i want to test my great scott meme now as you can see just because that 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 tag is in there it will show up over here and then it'll play for eight seconds and it'll vanish and if i was to type in any other guff it doesn't show because it's not triggering it but as long as i have Great Scott in there, it's going to trigger it again. So as you can see, it's really simple to trigger these sorts of things. And this, this touch pull tool is really powerful. I mean, we, we're just scratching the surface of what it can do. But you can have it so that if certain people were to send in a certain message who was a mod, it could send out a tweet to say what you're playing and things. There's, there's so many capabilities in this, and it's only getting better and better. It's not been out that long, to my knowledge. And it's so cheap. It's it's like fifteen pounds. Uh, well, I'm from the UK. I think it was about fifteen pounds or so. Um, compared to like a Stream Deck, which is a hundred pounds or something. And with the Stream Deck, you're a bit more limited on what you can use, because this this allows you to use plugins. But OBS. I mean, a friend of mine who has a Stream Deck, he struggles to be able to adjust his volume in OBS with it. Whereas I can through the Stream Deck, I can quite easily set up a button to to take the volume down ten percent or ten percent or whatever I want. It, it, because it opens up a lot more of the APIs and gives you a lot more power at your fingertips. You can create so much stuff. Anyway, I hope that's been useful. Uh, I'm tempted to do another tutorial after this, which will build on the Twitter handle that we did, but show dynamic text based on what Twitch chat says. So for example, I've got a few custom um, commands through Nightbot, which is a, another tool that you can, you can plug into your Twitch channel, where it'll watch Twitch chat and do certain things based on certain text in there. But I've got a command for, let's say, when I complain about games, which I often do, uh, my mods can type in exclamation mark complain, and it'll, it'll basically say uh, graphics complained X amount of times. And that X number is a dynamic number, which is kept track of in Nightbot. Um, but it, normally, um, if, I was, if I was streaming, that stream chat wouldn't get pulled into the stream. So people can't see that happening unless they're watching the chat. And because I tend to do a lot of playthroughs, I can record the playthrough. Um, I can then upload it to YouTube afterwards and people would then not be able to see the chat. They only see what's in the stream. And because I try and plug as much of the chat through as possible, it, it's it's good and it works, but they miss certain certain custom commands. So with this, I can show whatever I want when those commands are run. So at least there's a bit more feedback for the people who are watching on the stream. But I'll do that in another tutorial um, on another day. So thanks for watching um, and I'll hope to be back with another one soon. Bye-bye.